Normally on this show, I talk about video games. I love video games, always have, always will, but they're not the only type of games out there. So today, I'm breaking the mold and expanding my reach to the wacky and wild world of tabletop games. And we're starting off with a bang. This episode is not for the faint of heart or the full of bladder. We're playing Betrayal at House on the Hill. Boo. Disclaimer, this isn't really an instructional video. I guess you could say it's more along the lines of a review, or at least as close to a review as any of my other videos are. All right, so the premise of the game is this. You and a bunch of your friends discover an old abandoned mansion on a hill, I presume, and you decide to go in and have a look around, you know, cause that always goes well. But to the surprise of literally no one, it appears as if not all is as it seems in this strange house, and perhaps you are not entirely alone. You get to play as one of six characters, or technically 12. Each character has this little pentagonal card with their stats on it. Now cards are double-sided, so if you're playing as green, you can either be Brandon Jaspers or Peter Akimoto, and each one's stats are a little different, so it does matter who you pick. Every character has four different stats, might, speed, sanity, and knowledge, and they all do different things, which I'll get to later. In terms of setup, you want to use these little black markers to point at the green stats on your little pentagonal card. That is what your stats start off as, but they can change throughout the game. Then you want to search through the room tiles to find the main entrance hall, the basement landing, and the upper landing, and set them up like so. Finally, separate all these long cards into three different piles based on their types, and you're off to the races. So just for example here today, let's say that I am playing as Brandon Jaspers, my hapless assistant Richard is uh, Ox Bellows here, Daryl is Madame Zostra, and uh, Glenn is Professor Longfellow. Hold on, let me, uh, let me get into character real quick here. Ugh, much better. Everyone starts in the entrance hall, and your current speed stat determines the number of rooms you can move through on your turn. I want to get as far away from Richard as I possibly can because he's the worst and I hate him. So I'm going to go one to the foyer, two to the main staircase, three to the upper landing, and then four I'll go through this empty doorway here. Whenever you go through an empty doorway, you discover a brand new room. To do that, you would search through this deck of room tiles here and skip any that doesn't have the name of the floor you're currently on on the back until you get one. I got the research laboratory, so I'll just slide that in right there. Almost every single room has one of these three yellow symbols on it. That correlates to one of these three card types. And if you are the first one to discover that room, when you go in there, you'll draw whatever card it says on there. There are events, items, and omens. Events and items are basically exactly what they sound like. Events are things that happen to you right away, and items are things you can hold on to for later, or even pass to someone else. Omens are kind of like haunted items, but uh, more on those later. Some rooms have additional instructions on them that you would do after whatever it says on the card you drew, and some rooms don't have anything at all on them, in which case you can keep moving. But anytime you are forced to draw a card, even if you have more movement left, your turn is over. The research laboratory has an event symbol on it. It's a little hard to see the yellow on yellow, but it's this little spiral thing here. So I would draw the event card from the top of the deck and just do whatever it's... <coughs> oh. oh, Richard, did you burn something? Oh, oh my God, that's... Oh, that smoke is terrible. Oh, I... okay, we're going on the move. I can't stay here. This is much better. Now, where was I? Ha, yes, omens. So omens are kind of like haunted item cards. Whenever you draw one, you have to roll six dice. 
if you roll more than or equal to the total number of items collected among all the players, you're safe for now. But if you roll less than all of the omens that have been drawn so far, the haunt begins. There are 50 different types of haunts depending on what omen card you get and what room you're in when you get it. So it's different every time you play it. Oh, I've been meaning to read this actually. So after that, what is going on up there? Oh yeah, this was a mistake. Well, might as well commit now. So that's basically the whole first phase of the game. Play continues clockwise as you move around, discovering different rooms, and triggering a bunch of different events and stuff. Most events will have you attempt a roll based on one of your stats, and your stats probably will change a lot throughout the course of the game. Oh, geez, all right, that's my cue to leave. I'm out. Okay, this is more. Are you a phone call? What? Hello? Bad little children must be punished. Oh, Jesus. Okay, okay, I'm out of here. Alright, no falling debris, no weird phones, no nothing. I think we're good. So, this phase of the game isn't really competitive at all. You all just move around trying to uncover as many rooms as you possibly can. It's real fun trying to picture how you got into all these weird scenarios and who would build a crazy mansion like this. Huh. Hey, a piano. You know, I actually, uh, I used to actually take some lessons when I was a kid. Let's see if I still... Oh, come on, come on, it wasn't that bad. Come on. Wait. Richard? Is that you? Is that... Eh, you know what? If Richard hates it, I must be doing something right. Whew. The best part about this game is that it's different every single time you play it. Sometimes you might spend the whole time in the basement and come over a bunch of rooms there. And other times, you might never find a way into the basement and just spend your whole time on the middle and upper floors. And that means it's endlessly replayable. Let's really put this back. Oh, a secret passageway, you say? You know my house had one of those. Let's uh, see where it leads. Glenn, Glenn! Ah! Oh, just missed him. Oh, but look who it is! Making his Chip Tide Show debut, it's my dog, Chowder! How's it going, buddy? All right, so, where was I? Ah, right, so, once someone rolls less than the total amount of omen cards that everyone has, then the haunt begins. Now, there's a bunch of different kinds of haunts, like I said, and you look in, this, in the instruction book, to see which one you got. Each one plays totally differently. Sometimes there's monsters, sometimes there's not, and it's totally, again, it just adds to the replayability. The haunt is different every single time. No. Richard, he didn't. Cheddar, come on, we gotta go. Haunt number 42, comes the hero. It seems all this time there was a traitor in our hero's midst. Long ago, Richard had sold his soul to the devil himself in exchange for immortality. Now, he is trying to open a portal to hell to bring his master into this realm. To do so, he must kill one of his companions and bring their dead body to the pentagram room. As he is immortal, he cannot be harmed by any ordinary means. However, there is one way our heroes can stop him. Find the statue with the book. Once the statue has been activated, it will begin to chase Richard throughout the mansion. If in the same room as him, it will attack his knowledge. If the heroes manage to attack Richard enough to reduce his knowledge to zero, they win. But if Richard can open the portal to hell before he is defeated, then he is victorious. <laughs> At 
this point in the game, one of your friends is revealed to be the traitor. Now, it depends on which hobby it is will determine who the traitor is. In this case, obviously, it was Richard. Now, it's everybody versus the traitor. You gotta try and do whatever you can to defeat the monster, and they're trying to kill you first. Like I said, every haunt is completely different. So you can play this game 50 times and have a different haunt each time. Now let's see, how the heck is this going to work? Uh, look! Oh no, Glenn! I gotta find that statue again, fast! Ha-ha! There you are, statue! Alright, where to next? Huh, Chad, you got me an item? Huh, a bottle? Well, couldn't hurt! Oh, yeah! Alright! All right, this is it, moment of truth. Hey Richard, I always knew you were pretty bad, but trying to open up a portal to hell, that's low even for you. What? If you really are eager to see all that fire and brimstone, I'll save you the effort. Ah! <sighs> see you in hell, bud. Literally.